What's up, y'all? We back in the Bible Bunker again tonight, making more videos. Uh, probably going to call this one the Assyrian Doormat. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 30. And it's only going to be about five verses, really only four, because I'm not really going to say much on verse 29. Um, but we're going to, I guess you'd say, kind of do verse by verse and break it down with other stuff. Um, so Isaiah chapter 30, verse 27 is where we're starting. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from afar, burning with his anger. Wait, 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 wait. His name is coming, burning with anger. Exodus 23, hold your place in Isaiah though. Exodus 23. Exodus 23. His name is coming from afar. Burning with anger. Exodus 23. I'm sweating, y'all. I've been outside doing stuff. Y'all, I, I know I, I, I ain't pretty to look at to start with, but if I'm a little, you know, disheveled looking, y'all just bear with me. Yard work season's starting to kick off, so y'all are able to see me like this a lot when the next coming months, but uh, I couldn't wait to get down here. I had a handful of videos to make, and I'm going to tell you what. I don't know what y'all going to think about them, but I've just been chomping at the bit because I've been excited about this stuff ever since it was slapping me upside the head this week. Like, hey, look at this. Hey, look at it. You know, it's like, all right. But anyways, Exodus 23. Now, what was that we just read? Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far. Exodus 23, verse 20. Behold, I send an angel, capital A, before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. That's that angel of the Lord. That is the pre-incarnate word, as I've been over in several other videos. You go to John chapter 5 now. The, the name of the Lord is coming from far, and he's burning with anger, is what we read in Isaiah 30, verse 27. Go to John 5, verse 43. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you were, were, you ye will receive. I can't even talk, y'all. John 10, verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Now go back now to Isaiah 30. Verse 27, behold, the name of the Lord coming from far, burning with his anger. Burning with his anger. 2 Thessalonians 1. Hold your place there. I have to tell myself that. I'm really not telling you that because y'all probably got sense enough to hold your place. I don't, apparently. I, I, I turn loose of stuff. I get like, okay, I'm going here, and you know. So y'all feel free to laugh at me. That's cool. 2 Thessalonians 1. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Another little side note as you well have seen on other videos uh there's no way you can read those verses and say that's a pre-tree of rapture that don't even make sense but anyways that's bonus material right there i'm just throwing that in there anyways burning with anger back to isaiah 30 behold the name of the lord coming from far burning with his anger and the burden thereof is heavy his lips are full of indignation and his tongue as a devouring fire we just kind of read on that about the, the devouring fire uh, in 2 Thessalonians 1, let's go to the next verse. Verse 28, and his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity. And there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people causing them to err. Revelation 19, his breath, overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck. Revelation 19, 
Verse 15, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he tread up the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. We skip down to verse 19. I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and then that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of burning fire with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which, the, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And we'll go back, Isaiah 30, verse 28. Well, actually, we're going, I'm going to move to verse 30. Now, I'll read verse 29, but I actually don't have anything wrote down for that one. I was a little bit lazy on that one. Ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept, and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. Verse 30. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. His glorious voice, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord for. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Isaiah 30, verse 30. I'm going to finish reading that verse. I only read the first part. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lighting down of his arm. The lighting down of his arm. We're going to go to Matthew 24, I believe. Yes, Matthew 24. I don't take good notes. If I stare over there to the side, don't think nothing of it. Y'all y'all probably are already used to that by now. I don't really take good notes. Lighting down. Matthew 24, verse 27 is where we're going to be. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Revelation 18, 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Power and glory lighting up. Back to Matthew 24. Power and glory. Hmm. Verse 27 was the lightning. Verse 30 is, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with what? Power and great glory. Hmm. Now, let's see. Uh, actually, yeah. Verse 31. I, I, I didn't remember the notes I took. So that's why I was kind of like, should I mention this now or should I wait? And I was like, nah, I'm going to wait. Verse 31, Isaiah 30. Oh, you know what? I have not finished verse 30 of Isaiah 30. I'm sitting here spitting out numbers. Y'all going to think I've been drinking or something. I promise I had not I don't even drink no more. But And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lighting down of his arm. I meant to go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. The arm of the Lord. You know Isaiah 53 is all about Jesus. Sometimes I need a GPS for this thing, y'all. Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And this whole chapter goes on to talk about Jesus. That's the arm of the Lord. So when you go to Isaiah 30, verse 30, it says, And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall show the lighting down of his arm with the indignation of his anger. There's that anger again. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7 to 10. And with the flame of a devouring fire. Same verses. Fiery vengeance with scattering and tempest and hailstones. 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 Hold your place. Revelation 16. Hailstones. Man, that's serious business there, y'all. Revelation 16. 
Verse 21, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Now, we're going to finally, I think, deal with verse 31. I got a little off track there. I'm sorry. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down. Now, I've talked about this in other videos. Uh, Sennacherib, the Assyrian king in the Old Testament, uh, some people say type and picture. Some people say arch type. Um, they, I guess there's other ways you could say it. Basically, he is a, I like to say type and picture and arch type myself. I ain't gonna lie. He's a type and picture of the beast. Uh, he was very arrogant. Um, sent his messengers to basically tell the Jews, look, all the other countries that I conquered, their gods couldn't stop me. Why is yours going to stop me? And I'm, I'm obviously paraphrasing that to the nines. But that's basically what he said. Very, very arrogant against God, just like the beast is going to be. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I actually think it's going to be the same. Uh, I think when he calls him an Assyrian, he's not just talking about that. I think this dude's going to be like from a Muslim background. I think there's a really good chance there's going to be literal Assyrian blood there. Uh, that's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. That's cool. Uh, just, you know, there again. I think it actually really means something other than just his arrogance. But anyways... For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod. Go to 2 Thessalonians. Through the voice of the Lord. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 8, I believe. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, we see this Assyrian mentioned in Isaiah 10. And when you read the early part of that chapter, it's like, well, this is, it's like, this is one of those deals where it's like, it's dealing with something that was actually going on then. But then by the time you get to the end of the chapter in verses 12 through 15, it's obvious that it's dealing with a prophetic thing. Because as I've told you in Isaiah 10, verse 12 through 15, God says when he has completed his whole work on Zion and Jerusalem, he's punishing the Assyrian. Now, common sense tells you Sennacherib was not alive for the 70 weeks prophecy when it was even given, let alone fulfilled. You get what I'm saying? And God's whole work on Jerusalem is what? 70 weeks are determined upon thy holy city. So when it tells you his whole work there, that is a cross reference for the 70 weeks prophecy, even though it had not been given. And that's why it wasn't called that. That was a tip of the cap, I guess you'd say, or a wink at something that was actually going to be coming up in much more detail later on. But I guess you'd say progressive revelation, maybe. I, I don't really know if that's the proper term. But his whole work on Jerusalem is 70 weeks. So if this Assyrian is going to be punished at the conclusion of that, we know it can't be Sennacherib. So what Assyrian are we dealing with here? And then in those same verses, I've also pointed out how it's very clear. Um, well, you know what? I'm just going to roll on back there. Verse 14, and my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people, as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth. He's gathered all the earth's riches, y'all. That's the mark. Like, it don't come out and call it the mark right there, but I promise you, that is telling you, dude's going to have lockdown on the financial system. You get what I'm saying? So, and I've dealt with that in another video. I think I had a video called uh, The Mark of the Beast in Isaiah or something like that. And I, yeah, I know it don't come out and call it that, but... I truly believe that's what he's hitting at right there. The whole world, y'all. The whole world. Isaiah 14, uh, that whole chapter is about the beast. People will argue with, no, that's the king of Babylon. That already happened years ago. Yeah, you got big problems because Isaiah 14, 11 says he's brought down to the grave. And then eight verses later, he's cast out of his grave. Nebuchadnezzar never died and resurrected. I don't know what you do with that. I really don't. Uh, and not only that, it's repeated in verse 29. As Y'all have heard me talk ad nauseum about the cockatrice and the fiery flying serpent. Out of the serpent comes the cockatrice. Serpent is Satan. Cockatrice is the beast. The fiery flying serpent is the fruit of the cockatrice. Fruit, if you go to John 12, verse 24, is a reference to death and resurrection. The death and resurrection of the cockatrice, the first beast, is the false prophet, which is the eighth king who is of the seven. And the only way that math works is that those two kings share a body. It's an unholy trinity. 
inside one man's body. It's not a beast, a false prophet, and a dragon like a lot of us have been taught. They're trying to counterfeit all the fullness of the Godhead in one body, which is Jesus Christ. So they're going to, if Satan wants to be like God, what, what's he going to do? It's going to be the same thing. Beast, false prophet, dragon, rolled up into one abom abominably damaged corpse. Um, the Assyrian, the, the Assyrian doormat. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's read that again just for, uh, I want to I read that one more time because that sounded good, and then I'm going to cut this one off. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod. That's all I got. Uh, He's going to be beaten down. He's going to be stomped on. Uh, I think that's all my notes. I, I've covered that. Yeah, I, Isaiah 14, verse 25. I didn't get in depth on that like I should have as a sidetrack myself. But basically that whole chapter... Um, People tell you it's the king of Babylon. He plants his palace at Jerusalem, which is mystery Babylon. That's why he's called the king of Babylon in the beginning of that chapter. But by the time you get to verse 25, it's calling him what? The Assyrian again. And as I said, he dies in verse 11, brought down to the grave, covered in worms. Verse 19, cast out of thy grave. It's repeated again in verse 29. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's all I got. Thank you all for watching.